right, beautiful. I am so disappointed in myself today because I'm not wearing pink. I did the opposite. I did black. But I have the pink table, so we're good. And I wore pink, what, last week? Whoever's been a subscriber for a long time knows that I pretty much never repeat outfits. And if I do, it's because it was so fire that I just had to give it another chance to live. I am ready to see some major pink color transformations. Up first, we have a video by Ethereal Alien. Ooh, I like that name. I feel like I'm an ethereal alien too. Oh! Hold a second. The roots are really rooting. They're really rootageous. And this is gonna be the root of the problem. They are about three inches long and they are fucking dark. They're gonna need a lot of strength to lift those things up to a nice pale yellow to then put that neon pink on top. By the way, the video says she's coloring her hair neon pink. And oh, to cleanse my soul. Understandable, I've definitely done that before. And it does, it cleanses the soul. Dye your hair pink. It'll help you feel better about your life and remove the demons from your body. I have a lot of demons, so, you know. <sighs> but luckily the ends of her hair are nice and pale yellow already, so she's just gonna have to match up the ends to the roots and then boom, semi-permanent pink color all over everything. It's gonna be if she can get it right, but we'll see. Okay, we chose to use 30 volume developer and powder lightener. That's a great choice. And what she needs to do right now, not paint her root with her lightener, but paint that middle little section. Go all around. Wait until that all processes to a pale yellow, or sorry, almost a pale yellow. Then go in and hit all those roots and they will lighten like that and everything will be even and beautiful. But something tells me she's not gonna do it like that. Am I negative for saying that? I don't know. Okay, so listen, I'm gonna say something. Eyeballing the ratios of developer to powder is a little dangerous when you don't know what you're doing. Half people do that, half people actually measure. I was always told, measure everything, measure everything. We literally weighed everything. But when you're at home, I would probably follow the directions because the lighter can perform in different ways if you do not follow the directions correctly. With hairstylists, we kind of know like, okay, we needed this thick to process this much or this thin so that it's da, 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 da. Following the directions is the best way to go when you're lightening your hair and you're not a professional. Okay, so she's doing a good job, but not a great job because this is the thing. She's not leaving enough hair out at the root. The heat is still going to affect that hair. Like, I mean, she left like a centimeter, a millimeter of root to then go back and do it later. The other thing is like laying the hair on top of itself like that, it's gonna cause the hair underneath to get really warm and hot. It's gonna end up being really bright under here and not as bright on top. So we don't wanna lay the hair on top of itself like that or else you're gonna get uneven heat distribution and we don't want that. I'm really impressed with the cleanse of the application though, and she's doing a great job sectioning her hair. It's quite satisfying and very beautiful. So good job. But, 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 I would start from the underneath of the hair and work my way up. It's just so much easier. It makes things much cleaner. You can just lay the hair on top of itself. It's just all around a better way of doing things, I promise you. The way she's doing the back of her head, so good. How are you doing that? That's incredible. I don't know how she's doing the back of her head this well with perfectly clean lines. So impressive. You should see me try to do the back of my head. I do it, but not well. <laughs> Maybe next time try parting it into two in the back so that you can work on one side and then the other instead of going all the way across. But then again, maybe it's easier for you to go all the way across and do horizontal sections like that. I'm really impressed. Oh my God! It's looking so even. And she did the perfect thing. She waited until the hair got to a palish, yellowish, color-ish, and then she hit those roots and evened everything out. Great job with that one. eyebrows too. I do love a colored eyebrow moment. I really do. I love a colored eyebrow, especially when it's pink. I love it. 
I love it. Or blonde. Blonde is good too. We even put a bag over the head. By the way, don't put the bag over your face. Whenever I talk about putting a bag over your head, it always seems a little like aggressive and scary and like, why are you putting a bag on your head? But I don't mean over your head. I mean on your hair. I just felt the need to clarify that today. She's doing a good job. Just don't pat the bag down to your head. You want to let the air stay in there. And also a little secret is putting in some water, a little or a little bit of sprinkle of water in there so that when the head gets hot, it creates steam in the bag and steam helps the lightener process. We don't want dry heat on the hair. We want moisture heat, <laughs> humid, hot heat. My hair is getting big, big. She thick, thick. Shop A3 Complex, by the way. That's why my hair is so thick, because of my new products. Oh. It went from, mm, oh, like from far away. I was like, oh, huh. That was the face you saw. I was like, ah. And she got closer and then she moved the hair and it was all splotchy and dark underneath. What happened there? And then the top, it's all yellow on the root. <laughs> to get a really even canvas before we do the pink, ideally you're gonna wanna make that lighter and make everything more even. It's kind of a hot root. That little bit at the top is all the same color as the rest of that really long root. But she is doing a neon pink. So it should cover up all this yellow and all the messed up bits and it'll probably be fine. But when this fades off, she's gonna have all different colors going on, so not ideal. Okay, we are mixing up the color and she's adding conditioner with it. I don't know why. Like, I want bright. I want a punch in the face of pink. You know what I mean? Her hair looks so soft and silky. I want to grab it through the screen. And with the pink, it's going to look 10 times better. Oh! <laughs> the application of the pink is everything I could have ever imagined in my entire life. The pink just went right on and slid on her hair. It was the most satisfying thing to ever see. Oh my God, I loved it. And she's being so thorough with it. I love when people apply the color nice and evenly. It's so satisfying. I say this all the time, but it's so, so satisfying. And she's sectioning and she's going on the roots and then she's gonna go on the ends after. That's a great way of applying semi-permanent color because if you do the ends and the mids first, then you have a really hard time sectioning the hair and getting all in there. And then you end up with splotchy parts that are not colored correctly. Um, and we hate splotchiness here. We do, we hate it. Ooh, I hope she does like a little ombre moment with the pink. Like I hope it goes from like fuchsia to a pastel pink. Oh, and I forgot the eyebrows are eyebrowing so far. They are definitely matching the vibes in the top of her head and everything is getting bright and saturated. When you're trying to do a very saturated bright color like this, every sign permanent color really, you wanna make sure you have a nice thick layer. It's going to help the hair process more evenly and give you that extreme bright color that you want. Do I look like that one troll? I want my own colony. Oh my God. How did her entire body end up pink? And how does this not stress you guys out? I get a little color on my hands sometimes and I'm like, fuck. This is never coming off. Like, I'm gonna have to scrub this all night, ugh. I see you guys with your whole body colored in the color that you're coloring your hair. Are you not leaving your house for a week? Is that what's going on? <laughs> God, those results are incredible. It's so fantastic. It's magical. I'm obsessed. It came out so even because she used such a bright, bright pink color. It ended up kind of just covering up all that splotchy and yellow bit going on. That's great. I'm so happy for you. And I'm so happy you got such an incredible result. Ooh. Up next, we have a video by Hannah Bell. Today's video, I'm so excited. It is another hair dye video. I haven't dyed it in over a month. The last color I used was super pink. It's definitely time to put some more fun rainbow colors on here. <sighs> I always love when Hannah does 
Her hair. I mean, the base looks beautiful. Everything is looking good. Let's see where we're going from here. Absolutely excited for this video because they just launched a whole new color line that is jewel toned colors. All right, she has all the new jewel toned colors by X Mondo. And let's see which one she ends up going with. Amber, this one is absolutely so, so gorgeous. I cannot wait to try this one. The amber would look so good on you. I mean, literally you could rock any color to be honest with you. Amethyst, I absolutely love purple. Oh, Amethyst is such a good one too. Oh, oh. I have something in my eye. So if you see me with a closed eye, the show must go on. My eyeball is burning. I'm here and I'm watching with one eye. Sapphire. This color is so deep, so pretty. Oh, our sapphire is so good. My eye's still burning. Hold on a second. Okay, we're good, I can see again. Rotolite, this is uh, the winner for today. We're going bright pink again. I'm so excited. Oh, we're going Rotolite. That's basically a neon pink. Like it is the brightest pink. It will literally look like a wig on everybody because it is so intensely bright. So if you've never used X Mondo color before, you are supposed to put it on clean hair. So I did go ahead and wash my hair last night. I'm so happy she's applying the semi-permanent color to clean dry hair. When you're using semi-permanent color, you wanna make Make sure you're applying to a very clean slate and everything is washed, dried. That way that color can really grab on and really stay on top of that hair fiber. Because this color does not have any peroxide in it, it's important to do that step. Because what peroxide does is it opens the hair fiber so that those little color molecules can go bop, 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 and stay on there. But without the developer, we don't have that. And the color is just laying right on top of the hair. And we need those little shingles to latch on to, all right? So I went ahead and just pinned up like some of my back dark pieces, but I don't really care to make it like super duper even just because if the pink does happen to get on my brown, it's not really gonna do much to it. I'm so excited to see like the contrast between the dark hair and the light hair in the front. I think this is gonna be an amazing combination. Rotolite looks so good on a, like a dark base. Even if you have long roots growing out, the Rotolite color just complements brown hair so well. I made sure to really, really saturate those bleach bits because the stuff is gonna soak into it so well. I can't wait to see how healthy and vibrant her hair is once this is all done. I love the way she's applying the color with just her hands. That's how it's designed. You do not need a brush to apply any semi-permanent color. Going in with your hands is a really great way of doing it. And then going in with a brush or a comb and making sure it's all distributed, especially with my color because it is conditioning. You can glide that brush through generally. It's a really easy way of making sure you hit every single hair strand on your head. Well, I'm just kind of going through it and making sure everything is like super saturated because I don't want to miss any pieces. Yes, saturate, 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 saturate. I love that word. I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit for about 25-ish minutes and then I'll wash it off. Okay, it's a little messy. Be careful of getting that on your face because it will stain it and I don't want that for you. I don't want any of you guys covered in color, all right? I'm sick of seeing it. Get it off your face, guys. Here we are with the finished result. I'm absolutely obsessed with this color. It is so bright, so pigmented, and super duper soft. So we always love that too. But look at that shine. Like, you can't make that up. Holy sh**. Yo, it looks insanely good. Sometimes Rotolite comes off as like a more of like a violet pink. I mean, pink is made with violet, but you get what I'm saying. Like it comes off as more of like a purple. It's so intensely pink that it's nearly purple. This looks so vibrant and incredible on her hair. Oh my God, that transformation was amazing. Out of, I think all the pinks that I've tried so far with like the super pink and the berry, I definitely think this one is my favorite. It's just so beautiful. It's such an interesting tone of pink pink too because there is like a little bit of like purple hues in there as well but I have to say I really really like this color I think it goes nicely with the rest of my hair and it's been a good time I absolutely love refreshing my hair color I really really like this pink especially with like my natural darker hair too it pops so well I'm a happy girl I love your color it could not have come out better you did such an amazing job and you always do and I love with everything Thing you do to your hair. You make me want to color my hair every time I see you do something. Up next, we have a video by Evelina Forcell. We are going to do a hair experiment. So as always, I'm going to do a bleach bath on my roots that are like two centimeters long. Okay. She's dyeing her hair fuchsia pink from what the title says. And her hair is copper. 
So she's gonna have to remove some of that copper so that she can then go pink. Unless she's doing the deepest fuchsia color ever, that could be fine. Cause then it will probably cover up most of this copper going on or this yellow. It's kind of hard to tell through the screen. It's more yellow actually. We'll see what she ends up doing. Okay, so she's going in with some lightener and I'm just a little spooked out by the application method because what's happening is she is coloring those roots but then she's also coloring the copperish yellowish color. So we're gonna lighten the pre-lightened sections for the same amount of time we're lightening the roots which could cause breakage and breakage is scary. I would not do both of those sections at the same time. I would just do the roots, okay? Let them process, and then we can go with the color remover on the ends. I love the Guy Tang color remover or CPR by Malibu. Those are great for removing semi-permanent pigments. It is the next day. Obviously, I have to make my hair more cool toned. If not, this is not gonna go well at all. She did a really good job, it seems, from the top of coloring those roots and making them the same tone as the rest of her hair, except now, now now she has a full head of orangey, coppery yellow hair. I am going to put a lavender color just to cancel out the most of the uh, yellow and orange. Okay, this is a good idea. She's trying to cancel out some of that yellow with some lavender. It's gonna create like a more neutralized blonde look, hopefully. Fingers crossed, because that would be really good for her. To get a really, really good result, I should be bleaching this part. But I don't feel like bleaching my hair. Again, I only bleach my roots, as you guys know. She knows that she might not get a really even color because the palette is not even that she's applying to. I'm gonna say what I always say for the thousandth time. Start from the bottom and work your way up. It's so much easier than flipping the hair over to either side. You're gonna have to do the bottom anyways. You might as well just start there. I know it's not the most aesthetically satisfying thing to start from the bottom of your hair because you wanna see that color go on and it's so fun, but it's so much easier if you don't do it like that. There we go. I mean, you can't really see that big of a difference because now it just looks brown and it might turn brown. That's the thing I was worried about. Your hair is dark. You know, it's not super light and you're just neutralizing that yellow on your hair. It's gonna still be at the same level it's at, but neutralized to a neutral color. So it's gonna be like a level eight blonde, which is kind of dark. Yep. <laughs> so... It's better. It's a better palette to work with. It really is. Like I see a few highlights of a nice cool blonde. Um, she definitely has a lot going on. The good part is that all those splotchy sections are already like a deep pink color. So if she applies that color all over, it should even out all that splotchy pink color and her head should all be one beautiful harmonious looking art piece of a moment. Let's just put on some bleach. I'm gonna do a bleach bath again. I'm gonna try and put this in my hair as fast as I can. A bleach bath needs to be applied to wet hair, all right? Or else it's just a diluted bleach formula. A bleach bath is just like when you're at the sink in a salon, right? We would wash your hair and we'd be like, okay, we need a little bit more, just a little bit more. And we put the bleach bath on with shampoo and bleach and water. And we just really quick, rinse it off. This, what you're doing, you're just bleaching your hair. It's not actually a bleach bath in this case. It's just a diluted bleach formula. So if you're using a 20 volume in that formula and you put water and shampoo in it, it's going down to like maybe a 15 volume or a 10 volume. This has been a two day journey for me, but for you, it's only been a couple of minutes. I do feel like the bleach did quite a good job, but I still have this very dark shade right here. Yeah, we needed more than that. We really needed like 20 volume and lightener to really get that hair even in those splotchy pink sections and we just didn't do it. Oh, and here we are with some four different pink colors. I honestly, I love when you make your own concoctions. It's very fun. First of all, we have Litchi pink, cool toned, almost a bit purplish. And then we have Juicy, a bit more warm toned. Pretty. And then for chocolate cherry, that is much more like a cherry, almost red color. So I think we're gonna skip that. And lastly, we have Virgin pink. I think that I prefer these two better. I actually like the one that she didn't like, which is like the cherry one. I mean, it's definitely more red, but it would have really covered 
covered up all of that yellow going on. I don't know, I'm not convinced that the first one's gonna be dark enough, but it's definitely a good idea to go with something that is more cool toned so that it does cancel out a lot more of that yellow. This is just such a pretty color. I just hope that this looks good. If not, I am screwed. I just hope it will cover all of this. Um, It's probably not gonna cover at all. I guess the worst that could happen is you just have a really warm pink. It's more of like a coral. I don't think that's what you're going for, but it probably will be like that. Worst case scenario, we'll just have to put a darker shade on top. Okay, the dye is all over my hair and now I'm just gonna dye the tiny part of my brows that I still have left. And we're doing more brow color. I love it. I know. I am sick of this. You are sick of this. Oh, it's just not good. I am going to go in with virgin pink and a bit of the violet dream. Ugh, this is so stressful. She's going in again with more pink, thank God, because it does look splotchy and it looks a little crazy. I feel good about it because it's darker than the other shade. I am feeling so much better about this round of dye. It looks darker, but at least it looks Pink. I'm so glad it's darker. That's what you need. The other color was just like so pastel and so like almost clear looking. We need that deepness. I am so happy that I didn't give up after the first dye because this looks a hundred times better. My roots, my bang area, and my tips are this beautiful cool toned magenta. But right here, it does have a hue of yellow, I guess, or reddish. I'm so, so happy with it. I actually didn't think that I would like it as much. That is your color. You own that color now. That looks so good. And I love the variations of tone going on. Sometimes it can work out in your favor. It just becomes an art, a little artistic touch. Makes your color unique. Ooh, the makeup too. The pink eyebrows. Everything just came together and looks flawless. I love it. It was a roller coaster. I loved watching that though. Oh, I love a pink hair moment. It's so scrumptious and delicious. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life. And I'll see you next time. Bye.